How's it going everybody? My name is Tommy and this is my one car garage workshop. At the very front of the shop I have my one and three quarter horsepower 52 inch saw stop table saw. It's a great saw. Had it for a couple of years now and enjoying every minute of using it um, a lot of people say that they like the 36 inch better but even in my super small shop i still much prefer the 52 inch just because i do a lot of cabinet jobs not just furniture um, beneath the saw i need to build the actual cabinet but i just got a bunch of scraps oil from changing oil on my truck and my fiance's car um, obviously a chair that needs to be fixed. The other one's over here. A little bit of stuff outside the garage right now. Um, and then boxes. We're moving soon, so I like to accumulate as much boxes as I can. It's also good for uh, shipping any pieces as well. Always have some boxes handy. Um, this is just a look in front of my shop. For the most part quiet on the weekends um, next to my saw i have my delta delta excuse me dj20 um, i recently or well not recently but when i first got it put a helical head in it the actual process of putting the helical head in it only took me i don't know two hours ish maybe um, Works like a dream, absolutely love it. It is an eight inch joiner. Um, sometimes I wish that I had a bigger joiner, joiner than just the eight inch, but as you can see, space is limited and cannot complain. Um, above that, I have a small pancake compressor and I mounted it up on the wall um, as most of you know, floor space is always a uh, struggle in a small shop, or in, I guess in any shop for that matter. So I put it up on the wall and I just put a little bit of a dam all the way around it so that when you turn it on, it can't actually rattle itself off the uh, platform. To the right of that, I have all of my saw blades. Um, I mostly mo use the uh, Tenru, however you say it saw blades um, got a combination I got a cross cut I got a uh, rib cut all that I got a special spe excuse me special uh, blade just for uh, melamine and stuff like that this is a double taper sanding disc I watch uh, a lot of uh, Mike Farrington's videos online or on YouTube and I've seen him use it I figured I would uh, give it a go. Got that. Absolutely love it. Use it on pretty much every single process or every single project. Um, I've got a cheap Wood River dado stack. And then above that, I've got my saw stop brakes and the other inserts that I use. This one specifically, it's a hack job when I put it together, but that one specifically is. Uh, for the double taper sanding disc. I literally just took a scrap one that I had laying around and figured I'd put it to use. And I got a little motion detector for when I close up the garage at night. And then I had a custom fabricate a lock that bolts to the back of the garage door just for security purposes. Moving on down the wall, I've got my jet 12 inch miter saw uh, i absolutely love the saw the only thing i don't like about it is the footprint with the uh, slider uh, i use this i use the saw for everything but uh, i just don't like that uh it protrudes so far off a of wall space so that's something i need to figure out um, i have it on this just cobbled together base that I got when I bought a couple of tools, actually when I bought that joiner. 
there was a planer that was on top of it that the guy just gave me. Um, and I turned the base into my miter saw bench. And I also put it on a piece of melamine on the bottom so that it slides nice across the concrete floor in here. So I can pull it out and I have it leveled so that it works well with the outfeed of the outfeed for the table saw. So I can just pull it straight out to me and then uh, make my cuts, slide it right back up to the wall. And then obviously I have uh, two shop vacs. Um, I got my Festool. I don't even know what number it is, but Festool vacuum that I use with my Festool tools that I also use with this. And then sometimes I'll use the rigid if it's not full of junk. Above that, I've got my air compressor hose, a couple of clamps, uh, I got my mask, and then my headphones, or whatever you want to call them. I got a bunch of scrap lumber up here. This is just longer pieces that don't necessarily fit in my other places for keeping scraps. Um, I got my impact and my driver or my drill. Um, I have my uh, Milwaukee Fuels and then I also have a Milwaukee in the top up there, uh, installation driver. Uh, beneath that is my Porter Cable Biscuit Joiner. And then I have my Bosch two and a quarter router with the plunge base and also fixed base. Continuing to talk about the router, I built the outfeed table for the table saw to also have tracks and a router insert. So the router is not in here right now, but I could pull this out if I wanted to. Um, I don't want to right now because I have it leveled to the table. Um, and I'll throw the router in there. And I also used T-Track. And this is the router fence. And obviously it's not done. I still have to uh, attach dust port to it. Make the dust port so that I have better dust collection for the router. Um, but that's the actual fence for it. It works pretty well. And one thing I will say is that I wish I offset the actual router opening from the table saw blade because if you're cutting quarter inch material, sometimes it'll get snagged on that. So I just basically have to round that over and it'll be all right. But you don't really want a piece that long getting caught or you don't want anything getting caught or hung up when you're making cuts on a table saw. Um, beneath my outfeed table, I have just a clearance for the dust collection hose. Um, I got some junk laying on the ground. I got a table that I will pull out and put outside if I need extra real estate for just holding projects or whatever it is. Um, I got my Festool sander, the domino kit, and then I have my Festool domino, and then I have a Bosch sander down here as well. This is just the sander that I'll take out when I just need to do something real quick or if I don't really care about finish. Um, I got pieces to my Fuji sprayer up there that I gotta put away. And then over here, I have my uh, Festool track saw. TS-75. So that's that part of the shop. Continuing on with the shop tour here. Going against this wall. I've got a fan here for right now. I mean, I live in Arizona, so uh, it does get pretty hot. I turned the fan off just for the making of the video so you guys don't have to hear it. Um, over here, I've got my Powermatic 141 bandsaw in pretty good condition uh, with the exception of the fact that the guy I bought it from made this table for it and uh, he told me that he did it because when he bought it at a swap meet in Scottsdale a while ago that uh, he bought the wrong table for it because the tables were off for transport and this is the table that he got with it, and this is for a central machinery bandsaw from Harbor Freight. So, uh, if anybody's got one of them tables, leave me a comment or something and let me know. Uh, because I'd really like to have an original table on this. Everything else about it's original, with the exception of, you know, bearings being replaced and whatnot. 
Um, it's still got the original motor in it. I, think it. I believe it's a half horsepower if I remember correctly. So I'd like to uh, try to get it back to as original condition as possible. So there's that. I also have a pretty big blade in it right now. It's unplugged, so I'm not really concerned with touching it. Um, and this blade is not the greatest. I mean, the bearings move freely. I mean, I gotta do some adjusting because that's actually touching the bandsaw blade, but that bearing moves all right. So I have to do some adjusting on it to take that blade because I was doing a little bit of resaw work with it, which isn't really the greatest bandsaw to do it with, but it is what it is. You gotta work with what you got. Apologize about the car driving by. It's one downfall of uh, making videos in an area like this. Um, continuing to look at that wall, I also have my crosscut sled that I just have hanging on the wall over there. I got some extra sheet goods. So as I was saying, I got some extra sheet good material storage over here. And then beneath that I have my Delta three horsepower shaper. I moved the bandsaw back a little bit just so that I can show that. And one thing that you're gonna find if you're working in a shop of this size is pretty much every time you gotta use something, you gotta move something. It's unfortunate, but do what you gotta do to get the work done. Here is more of my scrap ply that I have. I've got some pre-finished birch, half inch, quarter inch, and a lot of white melamine, a lot of MDF. That's my scrap sheet goods. Moving on, I've got my hand tool bench back here. My outfit table for the table saw is my main cabinet assembly area just because of the dimensions of it. But this is for all the hand tool work. So when I'm making furniture, this is where it's happening for the most part. Plus, if you're assembling stuff over here, making stuff over here, and you realize you need to make a cut again, your outfit table is also your assembly table. That's a real big pain in the neck. So I made this probably bigger than I should have for this shop, but luckily I am moving into a bigger shop, hence the reason for making this video. And uh, I always go by the uh, mindset of build it once, don't have to do it again. And with something like this, I can probably imagine myself in the future building it again, do it building a more traditional Rubo style split top workbench. Um, but for now, this is great, it's sturdy, it's really super heavy. Um, so it doesn't move when I'm doing my hand tool work. Um, I've got my fiance's bike hanging up here. Sometimes it gets in the way and I'll have to take it down, but you know, it is what it is. It's a garage at the end of the day. Uh, fire extinguisher up on the wall should always have one near the wood shop or any shop for that matter uh, I only have one vice on it right now it's just an end vice tail vice whatever you want to call it um, and I have the hardware to do a leg vice but as you can see there's not a whole lot of space back there to put a leg vice on it right now so I'm just waiting until I move and I've got all my hand planes over here on the plane till everything is on there with a magnet uh, probably could use another magnet, so I'll throw another one on there, but for now it holds them there and they're all good, so and My chisels all up there with magnets. I gotta straighten them out. They're all knocked around from working um, Saws up top um, Some measuring tools whatnot. I apologize. I got cut off left off talking about uh, the Hand tool bench over here I got some uh, measuring tools, saws up top, marking stuff down at the bottom. I got a dovetail jig, some rasps, a couple of different mallets. And then I got this old lathe tool holder that a buddy of mine gave me when he actually gave me his grandfather's lathe, which is up here on the story track not currently being used but anyways I turned this into just a little bench holder for now 
Then I got some projects on the bench that need to be finished. A couple of small things. Uh, let's see, underneath the bench, I got all my sanding stuff. I got some epoxy uh, just for filling some gaps and whatnot. Uh, the old chisel holder, some sanding blocks. And tucked away, I got a what's it called? The pocket hole jig. Can't remember what number it is, but it's just got the wings on it. And I have it bolted down to a piece of uh, I don't even know, melamine, I guess. And then underneath, I got all my scraps, or all some of them, some that'll actually fit. Uh, I also made a stool for when I'm doing hand tool work, but um, this bench used to be about four and a half inches taller, and I built it when I was just getting started. So when I did that, I didn't think about outfeed height for the table saw and whatnot, so I lowered it down to proper hand tool bench height, but sorry about the car driving by. But now the stool is a little bit too tall, so I'm gonna fix that. Another thing, I put an electrical strip on here so that I have a plug right near the bench. I am in a one-car garage, which is rented, so the actual electrical situation here is not the greatest. I only have one outlet that I run everything off of, but um, I also have a 220 outlet that I had wired up, so. That is helpful for the bigger machines, which we'll get to in a minute. This is a storage rack in the back. I have some of my car stuff up here and just tennis rackets and sports stuff and whatever. I don't play tennis, but my fiance and I sometimes go out and play just for fun. Um, I have the lathe that my buddy gave me is his old, there was his grandfather's. That's how I got started. And one of the tools I got started with and I will eventually put it back into the circulation of my workflow but for now I have a different lathe um, that I use it's a little bit more sturdy for the spindle work that I do in the center I just have oil for my truck and my fiance's car and then glue and finishing supplies and some extra drawer slides and caulking and whatnot um, going down I've got my Fuji spraying hose I've got a whole box right over here of um, what's it called dust collection supplies that I haven't hooked up because I don't feel like running permanent dust collection in this garage when it's a rented space and then I have just a bunch of boxes a few of me Nielsen boxes and stuff like that that I'll save for when I actually go to move so I can put this stuff away keep it safe I also have another table saw that's actually hidden um, I took it apart that's the base there it's a delta I believe it's a one and a half, one and a half horsepower table saw. Um, that was given to me when I bought the joiner. So shout out to that guy for doing that. A few propane tanks. There's one right there and there's one beneath it. And then I have my Festool track hanging right here. I'd like to get a couple different Festool tracks, but for right now, having the long one works. Um, and... Uh, no complaints about that, other than sometimes it's cumbersome to move around, but yeah. And then I keep my stool tucked up under there, push it in there later. Here is my Powermatic planer. This is a five horsepower, three phase machine. And it is the 209 HH helical head. Planer. I believe 209 is the right number. I don't think it's 208. I had to, because it is a three-phase machine, I had to wire up a static phase converter to the machine, which is not the greatest thing to do because I'm only technically running the machine at like three and a quarter horsepower out of the five. But good news is I'm uh, picking up one of my good buddies' rotary phase converters, which is, I believe, a... 30 horsepower capable phase converter so you can use I guess 25 of the horsepower um, or at least 75% of it 
and this machine won't even touch that so it's a good machine stronger than a machine even though it's running on a little bit less power than what it should be but just doing what i gotta do as long as i'm not taking a really wide and deep cut on it it's perfectly fine um, and then when i want to use it i just have to pull it forward so that i have the in feed coming off the out feed table here into it and then running out the back moving around here i have oops, i have the cord for the garage plug hanging on my drill press right now so i store it um i have my delta drill press really strong running machine super heavy machine for being a drill press nice large cast iron table and then it has a, a dayton motor on it and the old owner or i guess two owners ago because the guy I bought it from didn't do the switch but the switch is on there like that now and i do have a um, crack spec switch for it on off switch that i have to wire up i just honestly haven't figured out how i'm going to run the wiring through the machine so i gotta look into that but the motor runs great drill straight holes can't really ask for much else i do want to do a restoration on it or at least a functional restoration get it cleaned up at some point so i will do that the nice thing is uh i am a teacher by day uh, and i teach in phoenix arizona and it's pretty cool because this drill press actually came out of the school district that my aunt taught in in deer valley so it's actually got the sticker still on it there so it's pretty cool to see that moving over i have three large eucalyptus cookies that i will turn into tables at some point or sell the cookies i don't know if somebody wants one here in phoenix but uh, i saw or i saw, uh, watch uh, andy rawls on youtube and he made a couple of beautiful uh, uh cookie tables i'll call them out of ash and i'm kind of thinking that i kind of want to do something similar to that so shout out to andy rawls for giving me some inspiration moving on this is my powermatic 90 wood lathe very heavy machine this is what i upgraded to after using that craftsman lathe for a couple of years and i absolutely love this machine like i said i will put the craftsman back into my workflow for smaller things but this is my main spindle lathe uh, and i'd like to turn a couple bowls on it i know i can't do very large bowls but i'd like to at least make some small salad bowls and stuff with it i can outboard turn on it i just have to have it bolted to the floor so that the other end isn't walking around on me so that'll be something that i tackle in the future the bowl turning at least the other thing that i have to wire or i have to figure out is when this machine was restored um the actual i can't think of it, a reeves drive doesn't bring the machine to a full stop so even though it's on stop right now i plug it in it fires right up and it's spinning at a slow, slow speed and the actual reeves drive work works great but that's something that i need to actually visit and figure out above that i have all my lathe tools i have some lumber storage over there and then i've got some other tools stored back there clamps and my squares and whatnot moving on i have more clamp storage i have some pony pipe clamps i have those on i believe four 42 inch pipe right now something like that and I really like those just because I can take them off that pipe and put it on even longer pipe. And I have really super long clamps, super fast. And I have my Bessie clamps, which I absolutely love and I use for everything. I wish I had more of them, but you all know they're expensive. Moving on, I have my Delta sharpening station. I have a Black & Decker grinder. And then I have my Delta mortiser, which I also bought from the same guy I bought my joiner from. Um... One downfall with this machine is it didn't come with any chisels, so I've had to buy some chisels. And also the collet, I'll call it a collet, um, that goes up in here to hold your chisel center wasn't in the machine, so I had to purchase another one. Um, and I just got to finish putting it in there. I had to grind it down a little bit just to make it fit on the grinder, and I'll finish that eventually. 
I have my sharpening stones here for my hand tools, a honing guide, scrap block of wood that I was using to put this thing together over here, a couple of torches, and a dovetail practice piece that I made. Um, didn't come out the greatest, but I've had a lot of projects go since then, so dovetailing skills have improved. If you watch one of my other videos, I built a dovetail wall coffee cabinet. Check that out. Here is my shop layout, or at least the closest version to it. I like to sketch everything to scale, keep it hung up while I'm working. In the actual toolbox, I just have some spare tools, jigsaw, maybe another sander in there, um, hacksaw and whatever. Then I have my, me my mechanics tools that are in here and that's not what this video is about. So um, that's what's in there. And then up on the wall, I have my first woodworking project that I ever made, which was a flag. And one of the centerpieces actually broke somewhere down the line. So I threw in a piece of oak and I don't know, kind of like it. It's a good reminder of uh, where I started and, you know, in comparison to where I'm at now. It was a few years ago I made that. And then uh, I'm very big into snowboarding. So this is uh, the first triple black diamond that I rode that's uh, on the East Coast in Smuggler's Notch, Vermont. So over here I have my Jet one and a half horsepower desk collector. When I bought this, the guy that I bought it from actually gave me the bench grinder and also the Delta sharpening station for no extra charge. So shout out to that guy. Uh, super nice dude. I would like to put the canister filter on this at some point and turn this into a two-stage by getting the Oneida dust cyclone to go with it. But that's for when I actually move. I'm not doing anything else in this shop. So it's a good machine, strong runner machine. I actually didn't have dust collection for like the first year. So I used the shop back and that wasn't the greatest, but it worked. I apologize about the light, the sun's going down. So there you go, that is my shop. A lot of people uh, complain about space and I understand it, but at the same time, I build kitchens, I build furniture and I do it all out of one car garage. So if I can do it, so can you. It's really not that bad. It's just all about having the right setup and also putting all of your machines on wheels. My lathe is the only thing that I don't have on wheels. Well, I guess that and my workbenches, but they're easy enough to slide around if you got another person to help you out. So if you put everything on wheels, it's all mobile, and you'll be good to go. Hope you enjoyed checking out my one car garage shop. I appreciate you watching. You can like, comment, share, subscribe, whatever it is. Go ahead and do that if you like what you saw. If you didn't, let me know. Have a good one.